In this PowerPoint slide presentation, we're going to start talking about different theoretical perspectives that psychologists have taken on the study of aggression. In this set of slides, we're going to talk about the frustration aggression hypothesis. And we're also going to talk about perspectives on aggression that come from Freudian theory. In later presentations, we'll consider social learning theory approaches as well as evolutionary psychology approaches to the study of aggression. Let's begin with the frustration aggression hypothesis. In social psychological years, this theory is almost prehistoric. It goes all the way back to 1939, and it was originated by a psychologist by the name of John Dollard, and it went through many revisions throughout the years uh, with a variety of different colleagues. But the original frustration aggression hypothesis, the very first version that was proposed, was quite simple. First of all, it proposes that frustration will always lead to aggression. So if you become frustrated, you will behave aggressively. Secondly, frustration is the cause of all aggression, so that if you see an aggressive behavior take place, the assumption must be that some sort of frustration has occurred in order to make that happen. Now by frustration, um, I'm simply defining that as interference with a goal-directed activity. Uh, you're trying to accomplish something, uh, reach some goal, and something is interfering with that. Or if you have some expectations about how things are supposed to come down and it doesn't work that way, then that is also going to be frustrating. The first studies on frustration aggression were actually uh, pretty supportive. Uh, they did things such as uh, having little kids have to wait outside of a room full of attractive toys as they watched other kids being allowed into the room to play with them. And when the kids who were forced to wait finally got a chance to go in there, they behaved much more aggressively. They fought with each other, they smashed the toys and threw them around. Um, and with older people, studies on college students showed that if students had to wait around for a psychology experiment to begin because somebody was late, when that person actually finally arrived, the uh, people gave stronger shocks in the experiment than they did when the experiment got started on time. So the original studies uh, tended to be fairly supportive of this idea that frustration leads to aggression. The problem was that there were just enough exceptions to make researchers uneasy. There were situations where frustration occurred and it did not always lead to aggression and there were other situations where aggression occurred in the absence of any kind of frustration. And so the theory kept going through different revisions to try to explain the new findings. And I won't uh, get into the details of what those studies are right now, but there are many different versions of the frustration aggression hypothesis. So uh, this theory never actually went away, it just sort of went out of fashion. And so the assumption is that frustration and aggression are undoubtedly linked um, together, but it's doubtful that the relationship is quite as straightforward and simple as the original model suggested. The theories of Sigmund Freud have also been applied to understanding aggression. And before I get into the details of what he had to say about aggression, a little bit of background is necessary on Freud's position. As most of you know, Freud believed that human behavior is motivated by unconscious forces uh, that we're just not aware of. And the essential thing that generated these um, unconscious energies is something he referred to as eros, also known as the sex instinct. Eros is the thing that generates libido, which is a constructive, positive sexual energy. So Freud thought of eros as a, an essentially positive thing. It's the source of all of our motivation. It's the thing that motivates us to get out of bed and work hard at our job all day. It's the force that uh, guides us through artistic and athletic accomplishments of all sorts. And so Eros for Freud was essentially a positive force and it was the thing that motivated all human behavior. However, uh, Freud was completely blown away by the 
violence and cruelty that he saw during World War I. And he could not reconcile his uh, generally positive feelings about Eros with the atrocious uh, violent behavior that he was witnessing in World War I. So he thought there must be more to humans than he had thought. And this is when he generated his notion of Thanatos, which has also come to be known as the death instinct. To use Star Wars terminology, think of Thanatos as the dark side of human nature. According to Freud, we have this instinctive impulse uh, that is destructive, that is aggressive, aggressive, and it is the source of violence and aggression in human beings. Freud believed that this could be turned outward uh, toward other people, so you could become an aggressive, aggressive statistic, excuse me, aggressive sadistic person, or it could be turned inward on yourself and you could become masochistic or suicidal. Freud never really had a chance to develop uh, his notions of Thanatos. He was very late in his career when he first started uh, working with this concept, and he died be had a, before he had a chance to fully uh, develop this. But his lasting contribution to thinking about aggression was he was proposing that, in fact, uh, being aggressive is part of human nature. It's part of who we are as a species. And this puts him at odds with many of the more commonly accepted positions on aggression, such as social learning theory, which we will talk about in the next set of PowerPoint slides.